So to set up the Readwise integration, you need to be on a paid plan. And if you are, you can come into the capacity settings and find the Readwise integration button in this section. First of all, we need to click this connect to Readwise button and this will take you to a login screen. From here, you need to either log in and then authorize capacities or if you're already logged in, just click authorize. This then creates a connection between capacities and Readwise, which we can now define ourselves. So now I'm back in capacities, you can see what we are working with. We'll be spending most of our time in this section here because this is defining the exact behavior that you want from the Readwise and capacities integration. It's done on a space by space basis. So your first space is gonna be this default one here, but if this isn't the correct space, just click delete and add whatever space you want here. So first of all, you need to define your sync tag. The capacities integration is designed for intentionality. And the way that we do that is by saying, look in Readwise for anything with your synchronization tag. And if you see that tag, bring it into capacities. So here you can choose what that sync tag is. By default, it's capacities, but you could do anything you wanted. If you do want to edit it, just click this button and click save, but please do read the warning before you go ahead with that. Once that is done, you need to decide if you want to auto import new content. So what this means is that going forward after whatever date and time is in this connection box, any new highlights that are created will come into capacities following how you've mapped it up, which is in the next section. If you want that to happen and you are only using one space, you can click sync all new items. This is not going to sync everything you've ever highlighted in Readwise. There is no setup for that with our integration. It's all about intentionally using what you specifically want and you assign that with that sync tag or going forward, meaning it can only grow at the same speed as you're reading. So it's up to you. And of course, you could just turn this off at any time by unchecking the button. So that's the kind of base structure set up now. And next, we're going to look at object mappings. So your Readwise highlights technically belong to what they call a document. And it's very similar to how you can have an object in capacities, a note, and in it there are blocks. So what you can do is you can map document types from Readwise, which are listed here, onto object types in capacities. There are default settings already applied, which you can see here, but if you want, you can edit them. So for example, if you'd prefer an article to be a different type, such as source, you can do that and you can map any text properties you have as well. You cannot map other types of properties at this time. So you can just have a look at your object type list and choose which is the most appropriate and map any properties if you'd like to. I will just leave it with the default ones, um, which is like that. You'll also see that there is a secondary uh, toggle here, um, which tells you that tweets and PDFs will be mapped automatically just following the capacities way of working. So they can't be changed. Once your mapping is done, you have one last decision to make, and that's what you want to do with tags. Readwise has tags, capacities has tags, and within your own practices, they might cross over, they might be completely separate, or there might be something else going on. So it's completely up to you how you want to deal with tags that are coming from Readwise into capacities. You can choose to ignore them, to match any of your Readwise tags to any ones that currently exist in capacities, or to import all tags. If all tags are imported, existing tags will be matched. And if there is a tag that doesn't yet have a matching capacities, we'll create one for you. And then you can choose if you want this sync tag to be shown in capacities as well. The benefit of this is that you would have a one click method to find all items synced from Readwise. If that is useful to you, check it. If that's not useful to you, leave it unchecked. And that is the setup. So when this is set up, if you have something that you want to send to capacities, you can tag it with your sync tag, and then that will be synced to capacities. 
It will take a few minutes to sync and that gives me the opportunity to show you something that you don't have to set up but that is automatically built in when you have the Readwise integration set up and that is searching for your Readwise content from our search bar. So if you click import from Readwise it's going to fetch the names of all the things you have saved. I've just set up a new demo account so there's obviously not very much but once you find what you want you can click it and that will import right away. I can see that in my created today section and this is what the Readwise document has transformed into with my capacity setup. I have my object which is a web link because that is how I mapped it. So this is an article mapped to a web link. It pulls in all the information, including the URL to take me back to the original, all of my highlights, and it tells me the type of Readwise document it is. If I click on that, I go right back to my highlights there. These highlights have several different things that you can do with them. And of course, the intention behind this integration is to help you do something with your highlights. So if you're interested in workflows around that, then check out the next video because that is exactly what it is going to discuss.